Once upon a time, there was a village called Ayappa. In that village, there lived a boy named Ratna Kumar. He was living with his parents, who were old in age, and he was making sure that he took care of them for their daily needs. One day, he looks at his parents and says this to them: "Mother, I'll be leaving to the city right now. I want you to look after each other and take care of each other." I will go and find myself a job and I will come back. What is this Ratna? You are our only son. If you leave us, what will we do? We will miss you very much. Mother, I am not leaving you. I am going to the city so that I can find myself a job. The income that we have right now is not sufficient for us. So, I will get myself a job and I will provide and look after both of you. For that, I should leave mother. No worries. You can do whatever your mind tells you to do. Make sure you go there and work safely. I also want you to make sure that you eat every day on time. Sure mother, please look after yourself. Ratna Kumar leaves his family and it goes away from his village. As he kept walking towards the city, he visited the beach. In the beach, he sees a fish that is outside of the ocean and it's struggling to breathe as it is outside of the water. Looking at the fish, Ratna Kumar feels empathy for the fish. Ratna Kumar felt so pity for the fish and thinks this to himself like this. Oh no, this fish is struggling for its life. Somehow it is outside of the ocean and it is unable to breathe in land. I should take this fish and put it back in the ocean where it belongs so that it would save its life. He takes the fish from the ground. and carefully puts it inside the ocean as soon as the fish swam in the ocean it moved around in happiness and joy looking at the fish ratna kumar becomes really happy thank god i'm so proud of myself that i was able to save the life of this fish i'm so immersed with the joy that i almost forgot that i have to go back to the city now i shall travel to the city right now i have to move from this place ratna kumar then travels back to the city As he kept walking, he started hearing a voice from behind him that called his name. "Hey youngster, can you please stop for a while? Do not walk away as I'm calling you." "Who was that? I felt like someone was calling me. Who might that be?" He sees a woman who was standing in the ocean. She was half immersed in the ocean and she was calling his name. Since he hadn't seen her before, he didn't know who she is. So he keeps walking towards the city. Hey, I'm calling you. Why are you not talking to me? How can you keep walking away when you've heard me several times? He was very surprised that this woman was calling him from the ocean. He then slowly walks back to talk to her. As soon as he looks at her, he says like this: "Who are you and why have you called me?" "Listen to me, young man. I think you are unable to recognize me." A while ago you took a fish and you put it in the ocean that fish is me and you saved my damn life Are you the fish that I saved just a while ago if that's the case then how are you in the form of a human I am a mermaid I can transform myself into a fish and I can be a human being as well As the mermaid kept talking to Ratna Kumar she gets out of the ocean to show her entire body And when Ratna Kumar sees her, he sees a woman whose the body is half human and half fish. Ratna Kumar is unable to believe his own eyes. Perplexed by the entire situation, Ratna Kumar looks at the mermaid and says this: "Yes, yes, I believe you right now. You are a mermaid. My grandmother used to tell me stories about mermaids when I was a child. But I have a question: If you are a mermaid," How come you did not use your power to save yourself when you were in the form of a fish you could have saved yourself right then why didn't you do that all my powers exist as long as i'm in the ocean if i'm not in the ocean i will immediately lose my powers and turn into a helpless fish is that why you suffered so much as a fish yes young man That is why I am eternally grateful for what you have done for me. Therefore, I have decided to give you a special prize for what you have done for me. I don't think I deserve a prize for helping you, and also I don't think any prize that you can give me is valuable as I need to make a lot of money to provide and look after my parents. 
This prize is a shell. I appreciate your devotion to your parents and I do not know how you will attain the goal of earning money. But this shell that I am about to give you will be valuable as you can hear any animal's language as they speak. I don't know how this will help you but since you saved my life, I will give this to you my young man. I accept your gift. If this object can help me hear the languages of other animals then I will be more than happy to accept it. Thank you so much. After Ratnakumar received his present from the mermaid, he saw the mermaid swim back into the depths of the ocean. Ratnakumar then kept walking towards his city as he kept passing the forest. In the forest, he hears two parrots and he looks at them in awe. As he kept looking at the parrots, they were sitting in the tree. He said this to himself. Nice parrots talking to each other. Now I can see if the object that the mermaid give me works or not. Ratna Kumar takes the shell and puts it right next to his ear to hear what the birds are talking about. As he kept hearing, he hears their conversation. My dear, could you please tell me out all the animals in the world which one is the most innocent and noble? I would really like to know the answer for this. You have become so intelligent. You are asking me very complicated questions now. If you don't know the answer to the question, you don't have to tell me. I asked you this question because I thought you were knowledgeable. You are getting so angry. I know the answer to the question. Listen to what I'm saying. Tell me fast. I want to know the answer to the question. The world's most innocent animals are none other than the human beings. As he was using the magical shell that the mermaid gave him, he was able to hear the two parrots talking. But Ratna Kumar was very amazed by the answer that the parrot gave. Ratna Kumar kept listening to the parrot's conversation. How can you give me such a silly answer? Everybody says all the time that human beings are the most talented and gifted. How can they be the most innocent? The reason why I say human beings are the most innocent is because they think that they are intelligent themselves, but in reality, they don't know anything. For example, can you see that over there? Yes, I can see that. What is so special about that? There only seems to be water over there. Are you mad? In that pond, there is a stone. That stone is a stone that people step on to cross the pond. But in actuality, the stone is a golden stone that has several valuable attributes to it. But the humans have no idea about it. Now tell me who is more innocent than them? Now I realize what you said is true. These human beings only think that they are intelligent, but in actuality they seem to be so innocent. But why can't we just go fly and find something to eat? You're right. Even I'm hungry. Let us go. Ratna Kumar had just heard two parrots talk to each other about a golden stone which was in a pond. After the two parrots flew away, Ratna Kumar thinks to himself and says, "Why are these parrots talking about human beings like that?" But I don't care about that. Now I am going to go and get that golden stone from the pond. Ratna Kumar then goes to the pond which was nearby and picks up the stone which the parrots were referring to. As soon as he wiped the stone for a while, he realizes that the stone is actually a gold. Once he understands that he has a golden stone in his hand, he says, What the two parrots were talking about was absolutely true. Now I'm going to take the stone and sell it and earn a lot of money so that I can look after my parents. Ratna Kumar is really happy that he has a golden stone and he walks back to the city to sell it. As he was on his way, he hears crows screaming at each other. He then thinks this to himself and says, If I was able to earn so much from just listening to two parrots in the forest, I think I should also listen to what these crows are saying. He then takes the magical shell and puts it across his ear to hear what the crows are talking about. What is my friend? It has been a long time since I will see you. How is life and everything for you? I don't want to talk about that, come up, but I want to say that the human beings have made me really upset today. How can you say that you are upset at them? We eat from the food that they give us. How is that possible? Today morning, while I was at the landlord's house, I saw there was a lot of cows among them. Why were they arguing? What was the reason for it? They seems like to be such idiots. Come on. Why do you say that, my friend? 
What happened there? It is not a big deal. The landlord's daughter had been sick for a while and they have been giving her medicine for a while. But none of it seems to be working as of now. No matter what they do, the girl's health is still not getting better. If the landlord did everything, he can do save his daughter's life. That is absolutely right. Why do you have to call them idiots? The disease that the daughter has is not because of something from outside. It was because of the landlord did to her. What do you mean? How did the landlord be responsible for the illness? The landlord had brought some of his friends to visit his own house. At that time, a snake had just entered the house and it has been responsible for the daughter's illness. As long as the snake is alive and in that vicinity, it will always be taking away from the daughter's health. Kumar listens to the crow's conversation and he understands that the landlord's daughter is sick because of the landlord himself. He then travels all the way to the landlord's house and visits him. And there are so many physicians around him. He looks at the landlord and says this to him. Sir, if you have faith in me, I would like to request you to please allow me to heal your daughter. As soon as Ratnakumar said that all the doctors that were standing beside him started laughing, one of the doctors looked at Ratnakumar and says, What? You think you can actually save the landlord's daughter's life? Do you know who we are? We are the most accomplished doctors in the entire nation. How dare you come over here and disrespect us like this? You say that you are a doctor or what? Sir, my name is Ratnakumar and I am not a doctor. But I do know how to heal this girl's disease that I can guarantee. Why do you say that? You are not a doctor. What makes you think that you know something that we don't? Are you a mentally ill person? As the doctors were making fun of Ratnakumar, the landlord kept quiet and appreciated Ratnakumar's bravery. He was in the position where he is unable to reject anybody's help as his daughter is very ill. The landlord looks at Ratnakumar and says this, Brother, I don't know who you are, but if you are able to heal my daughter's illness, I will make my daughter marry you and then you shall be my son-in-law. As soon as the landlord says this to Ratnakumar, come on, all the doctors were absolutely shocked. But they were also curious as to what Ratnakumar knows that they don't. So they kept watching as Ratnakumar went inside the house to see his daughter. Once Ratnakumar saw his daughter, he says this to her father. Sir, this is not a normal disease that comes from another life's curse that might have occurred around your place. I don't understand what you are saying. Another life's curse? Please tell me if you know exactly what the cure for this. Ah, uh -huh. that is a snake which is on top of your roof and it is struggling for its life. If you can climb to the roof and save the snake's life, your daughter's life will also be saved. Do it immediately. The landlord immediately calls few of his servants and makes them climb to the roof of their house to find a snake. As soon as they found the snake, they saw it was struggling as it was barely able to move. They then rip the roof off and save the snake's life. After a while, they give the snake some milk and the snake drinks the milk and it goes away. As the snakes went away, the landlord's daughter wakes up from her illness and walks healthily. Everybody that saw this were absolutely shocked and really happy. The landlord looks at Ratnakumar and says like this. You have done such a great job. You came in like an angel and you saved my daughter's life. I shall keep my words true and make you both get married. The landlord makes Ratnakumar and his daughter get married right away. After a while, Ratnakumar uses the golden stone that he got from the pond and starts a business and makes a lot of money. After he made a lot of money, he goes back to his own house with his newly wed wife and he lived happily for the rest of his life. If you like this story, do like it, share it. For more news stories, please subscribe our News Stories Book English YouTube channel.